and tell someone to feed you, and then you tell them which is what you won't be able to. Unless you're like super good with taste, which probably doesn't happen. But we have this smell and taste goes together kind of thing. So without our nose to smell the food, we can't taste, tell which is what, you know. We can't be able to tell the difference. Nasal congestion can dampen tastes. That happens, right? When you catch a flu or you get cold and you can't eat. It's like, what are you eating? It tastes like nothing. Soup tastes good though because you know it's just hot, or it just tastes like food, you know, so because it's hot. <laughs> tongue can detect other stimuli besides taste, right? You can feel temperature, texture on the tongue also. The neuronal pathway for this taste is you have the facial nerve that carries taste sensations from your anterior two thirds of the tongue. See, it says anterior two-thirds of the tongue. So where do you think taste buds will be more or, you know, where can you taste better? Okay. In your tongue. Anterior, right? Mm -hmm. Side of it. So the glossopharyngeal nerve carries the taste sensations from the posterior one-third of the tongue. So we have two, we have facial nerves from the um, anterior two-third and glossopharyngeal from the posterior one-third. The vagus nerve carries taste sensations from the epiglottis. Do right, you know where the epiglottis is? In your, where the food goes through, you have the epiglottis covering the, yeah, the, um, the throat area down there, yeah. The neural pathways for taste extend from the medulla oblongata to the thalamus and to the cerebral cortex. So that is the neural pathway for taste. Um, starting from, they extend from medulla oblongata to thalamus and then um, integration in your cerebral cortex. Okay, so that was your taste. We looked at taste and smell, right, olfaction. Now we are getting into the visual system, which is where we spend a significant amount of time. This is like major, right, so we'll look at a lot of physiology here. This consists of eye, right, vision, so that's where you see through, so it consists of your eye. Your eye has the eyeball, right, and your optic nerve. There are accessory structures here as well. You have your eyebrows, you have the eyelids, conjunctiva, lacrimal apparatus. What's lacrimal apparatus? For tears, right? Lacrimal apparatus. Extrinsic eye muscles. So these are all your accessory structures. Then you have your uh, sensory neurons as well in uh, your visual system. Here. So let's look at some of these accessory structures and what they do. I mean, they're just, you know, they're not just there for just no reason, right? There's all the structure and function in life. So, you, you know, the eyebrow, as pretty as it may make you look, <laughs> or not, uh, the eyebrows prevent perspiration from entering the eyes and help shade the eyes. Right, when you're running, jogging, or something, you're perspiring, right, you're all over, and you have this area that's kind of higher than your eyes, right, you know, it's like a genius in way to just keep your eyes protected. So it's there, well, you have the hair here, so it does not go through, right, it usually falls right over in there. So that is your eyebrows. Eyelids, eyelids also have a great function. Right? Whenever um, there's something coming towards your eyes, you close your eyelids, right? And keep it, or keep your eyes safe. Eyelids consist of five tissue layers in here. And they are usually connective tissue layers or, you know, skeletal tissue. They have all these tissue layers. They protect the eyes from foreign objects. Help lubricate the eyes by spreading tears over their surface. Tears have a function, no matter how painful the experience may be, right? It's lubricating your eyes. 
Lubricating glands associated with the eyelids. May Mabomian glands and sebaceous glands are um, in your um, eyes too. Those are actually the modified glands that make your tears. You know, the sebaceous and um, Mabomian, which is kind of like sweat glands. Ciliary glands lie between the hair follicles. So again, you're looking at hair follicles here and cilia, right, even in your eyes. Then you have eyelashes. Eyelashes also have a function. They project from the face margin of each eyelid, initiate reflex blinking. Um, so blinking is also, some, you blink, right? Sometimes when you have some irritants, you just blink in your eye to get it out or something. So you have this reflex blinking um, uh, that eyelashes initiate. Conjunctiva, uh, this is, what's the conjunctiva? Which area of the eye are you talking about? The no, not the eyelashes, not the eyelid, the it's the white part, the white part of the eyes, right? Covers the inner eyelid and the anterior part of the eye. So there now, this is where you have, this is your eyebrows, you have your eyelashes, have your upper lid. Here, this area, we call it the carunculum. You have the lower eyelid. Um, then you have this uh, sclera. The sclera goes all over your eyeballs, the entire part of your sclera. And then you have your iris, which gives the color of your eye, right? It's the iris. And you have the pupil. Do you think your pupil is colored black? No. No, what is it? No, it's just a hole. It's just a hole. And why is it black? It's dark. It's dark? Yes, it's it's almost just there. Absorbing light. It's absorbing light because what absorbs light? Which color? Black. black. So something has to be black if your pupil really? is not. What is black? It's actually your retina inside, you know, the area there. So that that is colored black. It has the pigments. So that's why it's a hole. So when it goes through, the light goes through, it absorbs all of it. So you, you see see that as black but but when you have this bright light flashing to your eye you know a lot of light that's more than you know it can absorb and and then it reflects like um, like when you're taking a picture at night with your flash and you have your red pupil mm -hmm. what happens why, why do you get that red what's giving it the red color now so obviously you have this light coming in right and you have, it goes through your pupils, which is black inside, so it, sh it should absorb. But then you're also reflecting some, because it's bright light and it's a lot of light at once. So what's reflecting is your vascularization inside, the blood vessels that's in there. So as much as it's absorbing, there's also reflection. So that's what you see in your picture as red dot in your uh, pupil. So the next time you see that, you think about the story behind it, right? You'll be like, yeah, I learned that from A&P1. Can you say it again? Again? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. All right. So you have your pupil, which is a hole, right? So um, the properties of light is when light is there, it usually absorbs or reflects. Black is a color uh, or um, absence of all colors, we should say, where you have um, all of the light being absorbed and nothing being reflected. That's why there's the absence of colors, no reflection out there. So um, inside our pupil, we have this uh, retina that is that has a pigment that's black, blackish, grayish, black. So that's why when uh, nothing is reflected, we normally see pupil as always black, right? Even if someone has really light eye, even if they're albino, <laughs> you still see the pupil usually as uh, black. But when you have, uh, at night, you're using flash to take pictures. The flash is bright light right in front of your eyes, all at once, very fast. So what happens is you have the light go through. Some of it is absorbed, but some of it is now reflected from your vascularization in the eyes, which have the vessels with blood in it, which is red, blood color, right? Um, and the vascularization. So you um, you